So, what would happen if you were to visit the 100 most recent malware sites without any kind of protection whatsoever? That is exactly what we're going to do today for the sake of science, to find out what happens to our system, does it remain usable, what kind of malware we end up getting, is it going to be crypto miners, info stealers, is the malware going to stay silent or is it going to destroy our system? To find all of these answers and more, I have written a very simple Python script and the name is pretty self-descriptive, so it's going to download and run 100 of the most recent malware samples from some open source thread intel. I have no idea what's going to happen, but uh, it's an experiment. So here we go, Geronimo. What could go wrong? As you can see, we've... Uh... Oh, <laughs> that was pretty quick. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> So uh, we saw about like eight or nine URLs pop up and uh, our system is already shutting down. I was not expecting that at all. This is not a glitch. Shutting down was not part of my script. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's boot up and see what happened. Oh crap, <laughs> we're going into the disk checking. So we have managed to boot back in successfully. And uh, if we take a look at the malware folder, it seems we're only able to try about 26 items before the system got taken out by malware. Since that was a lot more abrupt than I expected, and I do want to actually run more malware samples to see what kind of malware is out there, which is part of the point of this test, we're going to separate it into two stages now. So we are going to download 100 of the most recent malware links, but we're not going to execute them automatically. The script is simply going to download them into a folder and then we're going to manually execute as many of them as we can. Right now we're getting malware versus malware. I want to see what the malware actually does to the operating system. So hopefully all of that is going to work. And now we should have a folder full of malware. And as you can see, we are visiting uh, multiple IPs, downloading all of the latest malware samples. It's going pretty good. Once we have 100, the script is going to stop and then we can start executing them. That's the fun part, right? Ah, I love to see a WordPress admin in there. Probably a hacked website. <laughs> and there you have it. That's uh, our 100 URLs. Of course, nothing was blocked because we are, of course, running with no protection here, not even Windows Defender. And now we're going to run some of these malware samples. Now I'm doing it with my own hands. And we've uh, run into the same sample fast enough. <laughs> well, at least I know kind of what to avoid now. So maybe we'll start from the uh, from last to first. All right, we're back up and running, thankfully. This time we're going to start last to first so we can avoid the sample that decides to shut down the system instantly. This one looks like uh, Adobe got the old Windows help icon. It's quite interesting how some of them do bother with custom icons, some of them don't. Now we didn't really look for any duplicates, so it is also possible that we will be running the same malware as different files, but these are the most recent malware links that have been seen in the wild. Finally, we've got a malware with a GUI. <laughs> uh, there was a time when every time you run a malware sample, you'd be greeted with some kind of GUI. This one though, I'm not sure what this is, potentially some kind of adware. And oh crap, <laughs> looks like we finally run into our first ransomware here. And funnily enough, like I've made videos about almost every ransomware sample, but I don't know what this one is. It says it's changed the file extensions to night underscore one, and I need to pay US dollars almost 18,000, but it's gonna make me read 17,957 in Bitcoin. So I like how they're particularly annoying about their payment terms as well. Yeah. Of course, you will have to do this via Tor. Now, I want to check our actual files and see if uh, the malware is telling the truth. So we will check out our documents. And indeed, all of our files are encrypted just to make sure that this is not some kind of fake um, extension changer or something like that. I'm going to open it up in Notepad. And yep, it does seem like the files are encrypted. So it didn't take long for us to run into a ransomware sample. Now, the interesting thing about this ransom note is it even puts the cost in perspective. It says, this is the average monthly wage for one employee in your company. <laughs> 
So don't even think about negotiating. I'd like to know the company that pays, um, on average, $18,000 per month. I'm sure a lot of people would want to quit their job right now to go work at this amazing company that the ransomware authors are talking about that pays $17,957 per month. On average, not to some specific super rich employees, but on average to everyone. So this does appear to be a targeted attack. How and why it ended up in a URL in the wild, I do not know. The good thing is it didn't really encrypt any of the exe files, so we can still keep going if we want to with the malware samples. I'm just gonna run a few more and then we can go ahead and do some second opinion scans to figure out what kind of malware we ended up getting on the machine. Now this is the first one that has opened a URL, but uh, the site is down, unfortunately. All closed on its own as well. But that could also just be the ransomware. Something opened up uh, command prompt. Ooh, the AVG icon. I haven't seen this one in a while. Let's see if we can install AVG antivirus from this classic icon. It does say it's the self-extracting package and uh, the company is AVG Technologies. So this one is pretty interesting actually. It says it's the, the AVG installer. Might even be AVG. You never know. Because these days, there's no distinction between an adware and AV, right? At least in some cases. Unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case. I don't think we're going to get an antivirus installed through the malware folder. I think that's just a masquerade. That would have been funny, though. All right, now I don't want to push my luck too much because this machine could die at any moment and then we're not going to be able to run any scans. So I think we've run enough samples. I'm going to run some scans and we'll see what we can find. So just wanted to showcase that while I was installing Malwarebytes to do the second opinion scans, as you can see, it is detecting a lot of outbound connections from my system to these unknown IP addresses, which are likely command and control infrastructure for the attackers. The purpose of this could be to download additional malware to allow them to control the malware on the system, to steal passwords, send them over to the attackers, or any kind of user data, really. And now we're finally back with the results. Norton and Hitman Pro, well, they're lit up as a Christmas tree. And if we take a look at the ladder, you can see that we've got many different active malware processes on the system or services. So everything that has a number that's associated with a process or something that's running. Similarly, we have an active DLL. Norton detects 20 threats, but of course, it does not really classify them very well for us. So it just tells us if something is a medium risk or a high risk and how old it is. But the most interesting results are going to be from malware bytes and ESAT, which took the longest time to complete. But as you can see here, we've got a Trojan downloader. This is the Belgium chain agro.exe malware. We've got a Chromex Magna Search, a Trojan. This is based on some kind of JavaScript, I'm guessing. We've also got another cryptic Trojan. A lot of stuff in the app data folder. We've got another Trojan downloader. This one specifically, Amade. We've got something called the White Snake Trojan, which is also a spyware or info stealer, I'm guessing. So this is likely trying to get you know, our passwords and credentials and whatnot. These are likely the active samples in uh, app data roaming, which is why they couldn't be deleted until restart. We've also got a coin miner. So this would be a crypto miner that mines Bitcoin. You can't really mine Bitcoin, but it mines other crypto tokens on your system using your resources to profit for the attackers. You've also got some kind of kill AV Trojan. So I'm guessing this is something that tries to terminate an active antivirus on system. And very interestingly, we do have a delete defend and this is a registry key that likely disables Windows Defender so it cannot stop the malware. So within the latest hundred malware samples that we tried we did get one trying to shut down Windows Defender because of course everybody running a relatively modern system is going to have that so malware is going to try to bypass in different ways. We've also got NetWatcher which is classified as potentially unsafe. As you can see malware but it's still lighting up with uh, all of those alerts about outbound connections. <laughs> So there's still a lot of active malware on the system despite uh, the best efforts of ESET so far. Um, now, if we look at the uh, Malwarebytes results, we've got a hijacked shell, misused legit application. We've got a lot of DLLs. We've got some AI detections. We've also got a Trojan dropper, Trojan dropper, Trojan malpack. So I guess this is just detected by the way it's packed. 
we've got an exploit with an associated CVE. So this is the zamana.sys. Actually, it's very interesting because I made a video about this some time ago, talking about a vulnerability where a Zamana driver was being used to terminate any AV that's on the system. And it supposedly worked for every kind of AV, including EDR solutions like CrowdStrike. While trying the latest 100 malware samples, we've somehow run across that exploit being used to terminate the AV on the system. Funnily enough, it's appropriately named the Terminator malware. I'm really surprised we ran into it in our 100 malware samples, but there it is. So what have we learned? Well, for one, I was a bit too optimistic optimistic thinking that we'd be able to run a hundred malware samples on a system without it crashing. That's still a bit of a stretch even in 2023. We had a ransom note pop up in the middle of the process. We also had the system shut down, which is kind of counterintuitive if you think about it. If you're infecting the system, why would you want to shut it down? Perhaps it was just a restart to embed some kind of rootkit in the system. We also had a coin miner, which is something I did expect. If you want to profit from a broad botnet, why not install a coin miner that's stealthy and silent? It's also interesting to see NetWatcher in there. I was definitely expecting more info stealers, but we did get some info stealers. We got a lot of the classic Trojan downloaders, which surprised me a little bit. But the biggest one of all was uh, the fact that we ran into Zimana.sys being used to terminate AVs. So I guess it's more common than I realize. Because after all, everybody has an antivirus these days. Even if you don't install anything, you have Windows Defender. So an attacker does have to figure out a way to get around it. But hey, this was a really fun video. And do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more experiments like this in the future for science. Also, a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Guardio, which is a web extension that you can install to protect yourself from the kind of links that you just saw. As you can see on my system, it's block 265 already. So that tells you the kind of experiments I like to run. It can also protect you from things like data leaks. They monitor your emails, let you know if your password's been compromised. But I don't just want to talk about the product. I want to demonstrate how it works. So we're going to do the exact same test you just saw. Same code, same script but we're going to run it on a web browser that is running Guardio. As usual, it's gonna to try to grab the 100 latest links and download all of the malware into this folder. We've got everything pretty much set up and ready to go. So let's just run the script and this should visit all of the same 100 links, whatever the latest ones are right now. We're going to see a lot of alerts on the top left here for each of the files that we tried to download. But if we go ahead and minimize the browser for a moment and look at our malware folder, you can see there's really nothing here. So nothing was successfully downloaded. And for the purposes of this test, I did disable every other kind of protection just to demonstrate that Guardio can indeed block these sorts of malware links. If you want to check them out, you can do so using the link in description. You can go to guard.io slash PC security and you'll get a special coupon code for the premium version, or you can start your free trial. This is definitely an interesting new approach to the idea of securing the user. And I do think it can help a lot of people, especially with links that come in your email or phishing. And those things can happen on your phone or on your Mac or different systems as well. And Guardio covers all of that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that little demo. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed stay secure.